Besties, Mama Shark here. Today I'm going to talk about how I built my exclusively pumping schedule from two hours postpartum to 12 months postpartum to ensure that I'm making 50 to 60 ounces a day to cover my baby's needs and I was able to cover my toddler's needs. If you guys are interested in how I increased my milk supply, please make sure to check out that video in the links in the description box below. Hey ladies, make sure to check out the links below my LV Pump giveaway. It's going to be happening till December 2020 and we are giving away a few pumps during that period and the Christmas 2020 is going to be the biggest giveaway. So make sure to check out that video in the links in the description box below. First thing you need to do is make sure that you're pumping right away. I would say around two hours postpartum if you're not going to be nursing. If you are going to build up your supply the first six weeks or even more with having your baby nurse, definitely do that first because that will really help your supply definitely more than any pump out there. So to start off, if you are exclusively pumping, make sure that you're starting out two hours postpartum. Don't wait too long before you start pumping because that can affect your supply and then you will not be making making enough for your baby. So first thing you guys need to do, and I'm using my handy board over here, is you guys need to start with eight pumps a day. And when I say eight pumps a day, I mean eight pumps per 24 hour period to stick to the pump every two hours to three hours time frame. I'm breaking it out for you to easily be able to manage your schedule. So I broke it out in the wake up pump, which is always going to happen as long as you're exclusively pumping, along with the before going to bed pump, which again is always going to happen before going to bed. So the wake up pump and before going to bed are going to be pumps that will never change until you actually wean off pumping. Then I broke it out into the daytime pumps, which is pretty much any pump during the time that you are awake, excluding the wake up and before bed, and then the nighttime pumps. The first thing that I did is I maintained the schedule right here, 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., 7 p.m., 10 p.m., two midnight pumps, at 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. I made the mistake with my first baby where I didn't do this and I did not make enough milk for him. This is my second baby schedule. So this is where I was able to make 50 to 60 ounces a day of milk to supply for my baby. I was able to fully feed him exclusively breast milk during the whole first year. I was able to stash away some milk. If you guys check out my How I Increase My Milk Supply, you'll see how much milk I had in my freezer. And I was able to give my toddler, my poor toddler that did not get much breast milk the first year of his life, he was able to get a lot more uh, when he was a toddler at two years old. It's really important that you stick to this for at least the first six to eight weeks until your milk supply regulates, which means your body um, knows how much your baby is going to be consuming. It tends to produce that same amount unless of course you change your schedule for a prolonged period of time. That's what I did up until 14 weeks postpartum. I was at eight pumps. At that time point, I was making eight to nine ounces every pump I was having during the daytime and before bed. And then the wake up and nighttime pumps made me close to 12 to 16 ounces, which is amazing. Those nighttime pumps were the most productive for me. So this is going to be dependent on you guys and your goals. My goal was to reach one year of giving my baby breast milk. When I reached 14 weeks and I was comfortable with what I was making, I finally uh, was able to drop one of my nighttime pumps. So I dropped one of my nighttime pumps and I did not touch any of those first few pumps. Okay, so in order to really maximize the amount of milk I was producing at night, I actually combined these two, two uh, pumps right here to a 3 a.m. pump. Okay, so I dropped the 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. I made them a 3 a.m. So I actually dropped one pump, just one pump, but I made sure to change the time to make sure that I'm distributing the pumps appropriately to not lose my supply. And when I did that, 
I did not lose any ounces. If anything, I made more because I was going longer and not pumping at night while still maintaining my demand because it's all about supply and demand, guys. I maintained my demand during the daytime pumps and my body knew that there was demand. So the lo I went longer at night, but I still made more milk per that 3 a.m. pump because my supply has regulated. At four months old, that's when they usually recommend that you introduce some solid foods. I actually tried to introduce solid foods. My baby didn't have it, so I tried a few times. He didn't want it. I just said, okay, you know, you want breast milk to six months? Let's do it. So at four months, I actually had a really good stash already built up in my freezer, so I thought I would go ahead and drop a pump. But guys, don't make the mistake of dropping the nighttime pump too soon that will um, really affect your supply because if you're going eight hours in between, you might jeopardize your supply. Again, at four months, I still wanted to go to a year, so I did not drop the night a nighttime pump. At that point, I dropped one of the daytime pumps. You obviously can't drop the wake up or the four bed pumps because you need those. You need to be empty when you go to bed and you need to pump right away when you wake up because you're going to be engorged. 11. 3 p.m. and 6.30. So during the workday, I had two pumps and then um, one pump right after I was done working. And then finally my pump before bed, which worked really good with time management, especially with a baby and a toddler. All right, so we reached six months of age and my baby started having solid foods and started eating and he loved food. Um, so I didn't need to pump as much anymore. So I thought, let's go ahead and get rid of that really annoying midnight pump. So at that point, just remember when you do that, you might see a little decrease in your supply. At five, I started five pumps per, per 24 hour period, right at six months postpartum. All right, so at that point, Everything remained the same. The, like I said, the wake up and before bed stays the same. Daytime remained the same at these time frames. Um, the only thing I did was completely remove the nighttime pumps. And at that point, I even made a lot more when I woke up in the morning because my butt, I was again still keeping my supply, the demand going with the same. Um, interval in the daytime and that my body knew there was still demand but assuming that my baby started sleeping the night so at the 7 a.m pump i made close to 14 to 16 ounces which was pretty amazing at 10 months i was at four pumps and right from there right at 10 months when i already had a lot of milk in the freezer I started slowly every few weeks decreasing my pumps to where I went down to two pumps a day and eventually one pump and eventually completely stopped at one year mark. All right, ladies, I hope that helped you figure out how to build your exclusively pumping schedule or not even exclusively pumping, but for anybody that wants to build a schedule, all you have to do if you are nursing is just assume that one of your nursing sessions is a pump session and use that schedule to hopefully uh, supply your baby with breast milk as long as you guys find fit. Good luck and don't forget to subscribe because I have a lot of great videos to come for you.